Basibo ni banyabo mukama katonda bawo mukisa. Ladies and gentlemen, may the Lord bless you. Tukomye wona te mu ku program ya fetu wa yemu. I will back again in with our program just to discuss. Omanyi gwenjogera bwenti mbanjogera ngachitegeza. You know when I speak this way I really mean what I'm saying. There are times you speak with God because sometimes you need a response from Him. Many times when we're in prayer, and other times in binding and losing. But other times we need to hear from him. So today I want us to talk about hearing. But it's going to be based on the scripture. I want to thank those of you that watch us. It's really the grace of God for you to receive the gospel that we preach. If God favors you and you can share Jesus, and you partner and support us in this work, so God to favor you to he listen to his voice and help us and that is what will glorify him don't be afraid to help because all the church accounts and numbers are displayed and let us proceed with the message. I, I, I hope you do the giving and the support in love. So this is what the Bible says in the book of Mark. In Mark 11, from verse 20. The Lord Jesus Christ wanted to set an example for the disciples. But he was using a tree. Jesus used many things. He used mountains. He used fish. He used bread. For example, he used uh, boats or vessels. He used water. Uh, he, drew, uh, he used fruit. He used parables concerning flowers. He used parables concerning men, women, children. When you consider him carefully, the examples he used were examples that exist in natural life. But he was using them to explain spiritual truths. So I won't labor that point because there's much to say about it. But here is verse 20 in the book of Mark 11. Now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. 
The fig tree was dry right from the roots. It was dry. It's amazing the tree was dry. But what caused the tree to dry? From the very roots. So I want us to figure out why is it that the tree had dried up. So if we go back now from, from verse 12, this, this is what you find importantly. Uh, verse 13. Yes, we are going to go And when Jesus seen from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. But when he came to it, he found nothing. Nothing but leaves. For it wasn't the season for figs. In response, Jesus said, He said to the tree, Let no one eat fruit from you ever again. From today, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. He's speaking to this tree. But Jesus knew that it wasn't time for figs yet. So I'm wondering why did he have to then speak these words to the tree? But he wanted his disciples to learn a lesson. So the Bible then says, His disciples had it. The disciples heard what Jesus said to the tree. Because today we want to we want to declare that faith comes by hearing. Unless you hear the word of God. It is only when you hear that faith will come. Because faith comes by hearing the word of God. Many times people think faith comes because of different things. But faith comes because of hearing the word of God. You must understand that the word of God contains power in it. You believe in that word, it does something for you. Because his word is everlasting. Because he always watches his words. He watches these words to make sure that they come to pass. That's why I like sticking with these words. Faith is very important. But the question is, what are you believing? You must believe the words of God that you've heard. Because once you hear, whether you want it or not, it will come to pass. Because once you hear, 
and you believe I'm telling you it will work for you because when Peter and the other disciples the Bible says that they heard what Jesus said that is why we started with verse 20. So the following morning when Jesus and his disciples were walking past that same fig tree, they saw that it was dry from the roots. So we're verse 21 now. And Peter remembering say to him, Rabbi. Look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. But remember, the Bible says that they heard what Jesus said. Oh. You know, sometimes we stand on the pulpits and preach, believe, believe, but the question is, what are you believing? You must believe the word of God that you've heard. You must believe the word that God has spoken. And when I was reading this, I was so happy. Because there were words that the Holy Spirit spoke to me in a gentle voice. And now I know that I'm going to see them come to pass. Yes, nabadamu, nabagamba. So verse 22. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. Have faith in God. I don't know if I'm coming across uh, right way, but you must have faith in God. When someone believes, that means they've heard. You go to the church and pray and bind what you're binding. Lose whatever you're losing. What testimony? testify but regardless you should still listen and hear the word of God because what you've heard will come to pass as long as you've believed it so Jesus says to them you have faith in God for, for surely, assuredly I say to you whoever says to this mountain be removed and be cast into the sea and doesn't doubt in his heart but believes those things that he said will be done he will have whatever he says as long as he's not doubting his, his, what, his, his meaning there that don't doubt in your heart. Don't doubt in your heart that word that you've heard. I remember I was speaking to one lady. She said, do you remember when you said to me I'm going to get a new house in England? But every time I used to look, I used to look for older houses. Because my mind was telling me, where are you going to get a new house from? 
na yo mu chalo ni antigeza na nganti ebigambo bino biwangamba na biwandika mu bible yangi but she say to me the words you spoke to me i wrote them down in my bible ni na gamba tinga waise miaka esatu but after about 3 years amazima genyini katuwenjo gerera ndi mu nyumba mpya tukutuku but as we speak now i'm in a brand new new newly built house kubanga nze ya yogera na chulira because me the pastor that spoke these words i heard it kubanga katonda namuliranga ngamba mugambo mukazi oyo agenda kufuna nyumba mpya tuku because i sensed god telling me tell the lady she's going to get a new house echo tena wulira na chikiriza nange ne chituma je bangambi okchituma so when i heard that word i believed it and then i sent it to where god told me to send it gwe bumala no chuulira kati gwe enso bijokola so bo wulira osirika so the, the mistake you make is once you hear you keep quiet echi ntubo chuulira kyogere when you hear something speak it out lekachifulume let it come out of you Begin announcing your mind in Jesus name. Funayo na abantu bogamba anti munda bila wano nenzo mwako kujja ngenda kubera mu nyumba mpya. Get a few friends and announce to them you see next year time like this I will be in a new house. Gwetandiko kulangirira ekyo kyo wulide mu kigambo kya katonda. Begin declaring what you've heard in the word of God. Begin declaring that you were a millionaire. Because once you've heard it, no and you've believed it, and you didn't doubt in your heart, Jesus says you will see it come to pass. I want to go a little farther. Because they carries on to say verse 24. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, whatever you ask when you pray, Believe that you receive them and you will have them. So look at this word. That they heard. And what they heard, they saw that it came to pass. So Jesus wants to teach you today that once you hear his word and you believe it, surely it will come to pass. Now that is where I get excited. And call your wife and say, I heard. You tell her, God told me I'm a millionaire. You call your son and you tell them, I heard God telling me. I'm going to be okay. You know the way the devil has infiltrated in the church? doesn't want you to to declare what you've heard. People say you talk too much. You shouldn't have said that. Because the enemy might steal it. How can the devil hold what God has said? When God speaks, he's spoken. Once you speak, once God speaks and you believe it, then it's confirmed. So that's when the scriptures in Jeremiah comes to pass. God begins looking and watching his word. God watches it to make sure that it comes to pass. 
Kati ogena na ngulida haba antuvali yao Ntichi ogele kompola Tocho tocho tobi ogela tobi ogela So here people saying hold your peace Don't broadcast that word Let it hide it away with you Kati wino fana cho Gwe andi madachi langiri da chita Andi kukutu kilira So all this keep it a secret You would have instead been declaring it For it to come to pass Kati yesi tani agama Anti nze manyaba anababa Antu kumkomeli la jakubu usa musa So the devil knows that at the end Children of men will begin to doubt when you see doubt is beginning to attack you begin to proclaim I'm not saying tell everyone no, gubera mu church otan ko chiola angi danga bochi kubire ingalo bochi siri la bochi weera bochi bochi sanyukira amazi mogenda kuchilaba. No, but remain in the church, give for it, pray for it, praise because of it, and surely you will see it come to pass. Ukati omuntu angela kanti gwe pastor to mani bino bintu ya church o mani kabama nyoko no ne bintu. You know, someone might say, Pastor, do you not know that sometimes in the church people sabotage other people's words? No one can sabotage God's word. Because inside that word, God's word contains power. Kakati gwa gama antistani ya jakuwe na mchacha Uliderii gambo ya angela Jakuwe na mchacha Uliderii gambo ya angela Jakuwe na mchacha Uliderii gambo ya angela So you that is afraid That the devil will come And bind your words He can't Unless they're not coming from God Kubangu katonda ya yoge la Echi gambo Because God said a word Na gamba Enseno kubahu And he said for this world to be Enseno ulu akubaya yoge la the world exists because God spoke. We are alive and we live because he spoke. So you look at the book of Genesis and God says, I said and it came to pass. How come the devil didn't bind those words? So if you've got words that you've heard begin announcing them in the Holy Spirit. And you come in your house and there's people there. Don't be afraid because it's God's word. He will watch over it. Begin walking around declaring we're going to get new sofas, new fridges, we're going to be wealthy. You will see that those words will come to pass. So listen to this. There are many homes in this land. Some of you might recognize. It could be a very large house. With many large rooms. And it's a new house. It has everything you can desire. But I'm telling you that house can become such a tight space because of the words being spoken in there. If you have a person that speaks negatively, every time they open their mouth, it's not it's words of doubt. They mourn every time they speak. They never bring words that bring positive change. That big house can become a tiny space. And once it becomes a tiny space, love begins to disappear. Because every time you hear, you're hearing negative words. 
You hear words that break you down. So I'm begging you today, you hear the words of God. Believe them and they will come to pass. And as I conclude, for this reason, begin praying God's words begin praying and believing praying God's words because in them there is hope and I want to conclude because my time is up what are you hearing but disciples the disciples heard and what they heard, they saw it in reality. What are you hearing? When you go to church, what do you hear? Do you, do you, do you, whatever you're hearing, is it helping you? You must hear the word of God. Hear it for yourself. And you will hear it, I can assure you. And I'm praying for you today in the name of Jesus. Spirit of the Lord, listen to these words back. The Holy Spirit will convict you that the words I'm speaking are true. You know the simple words and the very easy words you know, and I'm not speaking them eloquently or in an excited manner. Because I'm speaking to someone out there. Someone might be saying, but you're not being dramatic. Well, I'll, I'll come to that another time. But the words I'm talking about now are life and death. Because if you don't hear, the word of God there is power in that word you when you hear it hold on to it don't get hung up on other people's testimonies don't only get hung up with the worship only you must also hear because faith comes by hearing. You can watch any pastors or preachers you like, but let there be one reason you want to hear the Lord. Three weeks, two weeks, two days, four seconds, surely God will speak. And when you hear him speak, it will be unique. You will feel it resonating with your heart. So that faith that God has placed in us, don't sit on it. Allow it to connect to this word that you've heard and then begin proclaiming it. Is the problem with giving? Is the problem with forgiveness? Problem with prayer? Problem with leave where you are comfortable and move to a different place? Abraham, leave your father's house. Go. 
and I will show you where you should go. So you bring your soul so that it's always listening. That is when you will understand that God is almighty. We shall talk more about this issue. But may God bless you. May the spirit of God bless you. And even I who is speaking to you now, I understand more every second. Let me finish with this. We have a pastor. We used to be in the same church. And he was a, a, a pastor from Congo. And I too had my own origin. He was a good man actually, he, he, no problem. And I didn't have any problem either. So the battle began when one day a Congolese lady. So the pastor used to lodge together with this family. So the pastor was saying to the pregnant lady that you're going to have a baby boy. He's going to be a baby boy. So the husband to the wife was excited because of the son. Now here's where the test is. So now the wife says, okay, we've heard what this one has said. Let's also go and ask Pastor Baka. Remember, I'm not aware that they've already had this prediction. So when they came to me, lady says to me, Pastor, I want you to pray for me. So when I began to pray, I heard the voice. The voice was saying the baby is going to be a girl. Uh, the mother was quite tall, even taller than me. Very, very beautiful young lady. And they were together with the husband. So I placed my hand on her and say to her, God bless you. Thank God who's blessed you with a girl. God bless you. Remember, I'm not aware that they had already been told it's a boy. Now, there was a problem in the house. The husband is saying, Pastor Baka said you have a baby girl. But the pastor we know is also saying you have a boy. Of course, So I sometimes you have to believe in the one who speaks your own language. But women are unique. God's made them in a special way. So she says to the husband, I want to tell you that what Pastor Baker is saying is the truth. And I'm telling you, I had had God right, and when the baby came, it was Sige, a girl. I'll never forget, it was about 2006, thereabouts. So that, that, that Congolese lady bought me shoes worth about 200 pounds. And the husband bought Mama Baka shoes worth about 100 pounds. Maybe for you it might be a small thing, but to us it was a major thing. And they blessed us too. 
And all the other Congolese people came, began coming to the church. That was the night prayer church. Night vigil church. I'm going to leave you with these words. Don't panic. You hear what God has to say. Just like Jesus said, you believe in God. So I want you to listen to me carefully and look at me. Look at me. I'm going to pray this prayer. But I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit is upon you because it's the only one that can make you to hear. Dear Almighty God, there is someone there asking, How will I hear? But I'm asking you, Spirit of the Lord, today, sit upon this person. I ask you, sit upon them to hear your voice. Because in that voice, there's healing. In that voice, there's blessing and riches. In that voice, there is power to keep their marriages. There's power to give their children wisdom. And in that same voice, there's power to serve you. Do it for them. In Jesus' name we've prayed, Amen. 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 I know you're, you're pleased with the Holy Spirit. We have decided to carry on with the Lord's Supper until the COVID uh, pandemic is lifted. So every Sunday we will have the Lord's Supper while we're in prayer. Uh, asking God and on Friday we shall be at the church and we shall be in prayer every Friday so if God favors you you can call or you can fill the attendance form online so that we know that you're going to be joining us. Not because we don't love you, but that is what the government guidance requires us to do. Because they require us the max to be 30 people. And always in our meetings we have 30 people. So let us abide by the government regulations and God will open up a way. But we love you dearly. May God bless you.